Hello and welcome to the tutorial for Electro BIM by Design Master. If this is your first time watching these videos, I highly recommend starting from the beginning, as I'll be making changes to the same project throughout. If you'd like to follow along, links to the tutorial project and written tutorial are available in the description below. For this video, we'll look at creating and modifying a single line diagram for a project that is already in progress. Here we have a project for which the initial design has already been done. We've got an electrical closet with a basic power distribution, a few power and lighting circuits, and an elevator motor with a dedicated subpanel. What we don't have is a single line diagram for any of it. Let's fix that. When creating or modifying your single line, all of the commands you need are on the ElectroBIM single line ribbon. We'll look at the commands on the ElectroBIM design ribbon in later videos. We'll start by running the insert link command. This command allows you to select a device that already exists in your model and insert a corresponding graphic on the single line. We'll start from the top of our distribution tree, the utility transformer we've named Util. Because it's configured in Revit as a transformer, ElectroBIM knows to give us transformer graphics to pick from. The graphics themselves and these lists are fully customizable. We'll go with the utility transformer graphic and press OK to insert it on the drafting view. Simply pick a spot, left click, and the graphic will be inserted. We'll run insert link again and select the next device down MDP. Because this device has multiple downstream connections, and because of some default ElectroBIM customization settings, it goes with the switchboard horizontal fed from top graphic. We'll stick with that. Press OK, and specify a point underneath the transformer where it will insert the graphic and labels. ElectroBIM will also detect any connected devices on the single line and draw the feeders automatically. We'll need to make room to draw the downstream feeders on this, so we'll just select the graphic, then use this grip on the right to stretch everything out. Run Insert Link again, select panel P, stick with the default graphic, press OK, and insert it under MDP. Again, the feeder is drawn automatically. I'm pretty happy with how this looks, so for the next panel, let's instead run the copy link command. This command works similarly to insert link, but saves some time on graphic selection by just using something you already have. We'll select panel P as the template, then panel E for the device we're inserting. Insert that here. And as you can see, the graphics and labels are the same. Do one more insert link. This time for transformer T1. Use the default and insert that beside these panels. You might have noticed the link commands only show distribution equipment, which is a problem if you have branch circuit devices you want shown on the single line, like the elevator motor in this project. We've got that covered. We'll just go to the plan view for that motor, run insert link, and this time it asks us to select a device. We'll select the motor, and then it will ask us to select a drafting view. You can go back to the single line and select something on it, or you can press escape to get a list of the drafting views in the project. We'll select single line diagram. We'll check this box at the bottom so this project knows where we want to go if we use this workflow again, and press OK. We'll press OK to stick with the default equipment connection graphic here, and insert it below panel E. At this point, you might be thinking, this is fine for a smaller project, but if I've got an apartment complex or a hospital, this is going to take all day. 
Well, next, we're going to run the generate one line command. You can see the devices we've already inserted highlighted in blue. We'll select T1. Since it's the only device with downstream devices, we still need to insert. You could also press the Select Drafting View button, then select the graphic for T1 itself, which is handy if you've got a long list of devices. Press OK. And there's the rest of the single line diagram. When you use the Generate command, it will insert all of the devices using settings defined in your project customization. It may not always come out exactly how you want it to look, but it will give you a good starting point that you can tweak. So we've got our single line here for the equipment we currently have. Now we need to add a new panel to the distribution. First, let's stretch our panel DP a bit to make room for the new panel connection. Now, you could insert it in the Revit model, circuit it, then come back here to add it to the single line, but let's do something a little different and run the insert create command. With this command, you can create a new device in the model, insert it on the single line, and circuit it without having to leave the drafting view. So we'll set the callout to L, Set the level to first floor so we can put it in the electrical closet. Set the voltage to 120208Y. Select this 208MLO panel family. And press OK to create the panel. We'll select a point below DP to insert the graphic. And now it's asking if we want to circuit it to a device. We'll select DP, and it will draw the feeder. So that's the new panel on the single line. Now we just need to find it in the model so we can put it where it needs to go. We can do that easily with the highlight device command. Select panel L, and it works just like Revit's highlight in model command. It will look for a view that shows the selected device and highlight it for you. Devices created through ElectroBIM commands get thrown off into space to make sure it doesn't cause any issues with your model. We'll just grab that, select a new host, and host it to this wall beside panel B. We can go ahead and tag it while we're here. Now that we have the first draft of our single line diagram, we can make some modifications. We'll start by moving panel A. Notice the feeder does not come along for the ride. You can move and stretch the individual segments, or you can use the feeder draw command. You can select the feeder itself, as we did here, or the device it's feeding. Then we just pick a starting point on the upstream panel. It highlights where we started from previously. Draw our way to panel A. And press escape to end the command. Which will also generate the graphics that belong on that feeder. We'll do the same for panel B as well. Move it into place. And this time, we'll run the feeder reset command. For this one, you just select the feeder or downstream device. Then you can select a starting point, or you can press escape to have ElectroBIM pick the starting point for you. From that point, it will draw the rest of the feeder automatically. Next, we're going to change how some of these graphics look using the add modify graphic command. We'll select panel P, and it will give us those graphic options we saw earlier when we were inserting it initially. Let's do panel with bus fed from top. The dashed type, press OK, and you can see the changes there. Because that graphic usually comes in with different labels than the previous graphic, 
Electrobim will ask whether you want to keep the labels and placement you have or get new ones. We'll select Update Labels to go with the new stuff. If you want to change the labels without changing the graphic, simply select the label and change its type from the Properties palette. We'll use this one that displays the device name, bus size, and main disconnect with centered text. As long as we're here, let's add a meter onto this feeder. First, we'll select the feeder ID, use the grip to make some room, then run the add modify graphic command again, and select where we want the meter to go between these two graphics. Because this feeder segment already has a graphic on it, ElectroBIM will ask if we're trying to replace that graphic or add a new one. We're doing the latter. We'll set the group to meter. Make sure it's using a regular meter and the medium solid line type. Press OK. And the graphic will be added in the location we specified. I did just realize we should probably have these swapped. No worries. We'll just run the graphic move command, select one graphic, then the other, and they will trade places. One last modification. We'll run the add modify graphic command again, this time for the OCP for panel E. We are replacing the graphic this time, so we'll select replace existing OCP graphic. We'll set the group to switch. Make sure it's using a fused switch and the medium solid line type, and press OK to make the change. We're just missing one thing here, and that's the feeder schedule to tell us what these IDs mean. To create the feeder schedule, run the schedule insert command. It will ask you to specify a location on the drafting view. Wherever you pick, that's where the top left corner of the schedule will go. We'll pick a spot over here. And there are the IDs currently displayed on the single line, as well as their corresponding callouts. Something to note, if changes are made, the feeder schedule will not update automatically. So if we run the edit command, and select Panel P. We come to the Panel Edit dialog box, which we'll explore in more detail in the next video. For now, we'll just change the bus size from 100 to 225 and press Exit. You'll notice the labels on the single line updated automatically, but the schedule isn't displaying the new ID. To update it, We'll run the Schedule Insert command again, and it will update in place to show the new information. Those are the basics for creating and modifying your single line diagram using ElectroBIM. In the next video, we'll dive into modifying your distribution equipment and branch circuit devices. See you there.